Hello, ladies. I'm, I'm so sorry. I'm back and Lord help me. Okay, <laughs> yay, I fixed it. Oh my gosh. Good morning, ladies. Oh, <laughs> thank you so much for being patient with me while I try and figure this out. I've been ready for an hour, and uh, of course, like all of my nightmares last night are coming true about it being sideways or not working or me freaking out, all of it at the same time. Uh, we're just going to wait a minute here. Um, okay, I can see what you're saying. Awesome. Okay, good morning. I'm Nadine. Um, and I am teaching the Kringle and Co. card kit. Um, I first want to say thank you um, to Katerina and Jackie for having me um, again. This is my second year teaching for the magazine for the carnivals, and it's just so exciting to be back. Totally different than what I'm used to, but uh, that's this whole year. So we're going to do great. Um, uh, a little bit about myself. Um, I have been making and teaching cards for, it's been, I think this is my, this season, this Christmas season marks my 10 year anniversary of um, making and creating and selling kits and teaching in person. Um, so it's a little bit crazy to me because 10 years ago, um, I never made a card. In fact, I didn't even like it. So um, I quickly switched my attitude and I fell in love. I fell in love with it. And to date, I have made thousands and thousands of card demos. And I've taught hundreds of classes. Um, so very exciting that I get to do this here. This is my first live. So I'm a little shaky, but I think that we are going to be okay. <laughs> um, to those of you that purchased a kit, uh, I want to say thank you so much. Um, the response was overwhelming and I, um, I only started out with 19 because that's how many we were supposed to have in person. Um, so I quickly got uh, more product sent to me. And we were able to um, send out 41 kits and that's just incredible. So that to date is my highest um, number for one, one class, one kit, one card collection. So thank you so much. Um, if there's anyone out there that still wants a kit because we always can watch back, um, I have four kits in my own online store. Um, you can find me by searching Nadine Karen Design on all platforms. Um, and I also sell kits out of Treasured Memories here in Edmonton. So I believe they still have some. Um, otherwise, let's get started. So these are our six cards that we're going to be making. Um, there are six cards. Um, if we don't get through all six, that is okay because... Um, they are, all of the images are saved in a blog post at my web, on my website. Um, and I've got the measurements there and the images. And if you have the product, you can always work with them there. Um, so we'll do our best. We should get through all six. Um, but I just want to start. So here they are. These are the six cards. And this is what the kits look like when they come. If your kit was mailed to you, um, it... The sticker sheet was cut up so that I could ship it in an 8.5 by 11 envelope. Um, I see people leaving comments. Thank you so much. You're all so sweet. Um, and if I'm not, if I can't answer questions, because I won't lie, I, I don't know that I can multitask while I'm doing this. But um, I will go back and read all of the comments. So if there's comments there um, that you're leaving, don't worry, I will answer them. Um, any questions that you have, I'll answer them. I just probably won't be able to do it until the end. So that's your card kit. That's what it looks like. I'm just going to grab the open one. Um, so 
here we are. This is what you have here. Again, of course, if you had your kit shipped to you, your sticker sheet is cut up, but you could put it back together because it's like a puzzle. Um, <laughs> somebody wrote Nadine's cards aren't the best, but I don't think you meant to say that, Kelly. But if you did, I'm just kidding. I know you didn't. Um, thank you, Kelly. <clears throat> so this is what I look like. It looks like when it comes. So with all of the card kits, you're going to get instructions, um, a color photo. The photos in the instructions are black and white. Um, that's a printing thing for me. So I always print off a four by six copy for you to have those. And then everything that you need is in the envelopes. Um, so everything you need for card one is in envelope one. And they're all stacked in order. And I, I number them. I number them in the bottom right hand corner. Can you see that? It's kind of hard to see. Um, I number them so that you know they're numbered one through six so that you know which envelope to grab. Um, and it just makes it easier to keep everything organized. So what that means is that everything that you need for card one is in envelope one, um, other than the stickers for this um, particular project. You also will get eight and a half by 11 sheets of um, cardstock. I have already cut mine down to size. Um, all of these are the same measurement. They're six and three quarters by nine and a half. You can see here that I have um, all the measurements that we will need. So if you are cutting um, and moving along, uh, you'll have those measurements there and you won't have to fret about not knowing what they are. Um, this is Kringle & Co. from Photoplay. It's their Christmas collection from last year, but I do know that it is still available um, from Photoplay. So if you are interested, you can speak to your store um, about getting it in. Um, this particular card class has six cards. Mine, on average, I always do six, never less. Sometimes more, sometimes seven, sometimes eight, but always six. Um, and I chose this particular collection of paper because there was no, and it, because it came with a sticker sheet and it had no fussy cutting. Because I, for the most part, always have fussy cutting in my card kits. And um, I didn't want you to have to deal with that. So um, I think that we are just gonna get started here. Um, trying to like balance time between being too slow and too fast is going to be fascinating. When I teach these classes in person, we book a three hour time slot and it usually takes two hours at the most, or sorry, at the least. Um, so if you have a kit and you've got all your stuff out, um, I had asked you to prep your papers. If you don't, not a big deal because as we all know, the videos are saved in their library and then they will be loading them to YouTube so you can always go back and rewatch. Um, so if you're getting behind, I don't want anyone to worry. I know how that feels and I don't, you don't need to worry. So we'll be able to go back. So you've got your card bases, you've got your envelopes and you've got your stickers. And so we're going to take, and mine are in order so for this particular card, here is our demo. And we need a white card base and we need envelope number one. Um, so a few things, I love layering and I love dimension. So th um, 3D foam is my friend. It is my friend big time. Um, what else? Yeah, so lots of the product is from like various sources. So this, these circle, um, scallop circle dies are from a company called 2D Design um, and I love them. This particular tag is um, from Michael's. However, it is no longer available, but um, easily enough, it's a black tag with a black reinforcement. So easy peasy to make on our own. Um, so we're going to take our stuff out of envelope one 
and for the like for this one it's about it's mostly just about assembly and stacking and getting ideas on how to design a card and tucking and fitting everything together like a puzzle um, it's not most of my stuff is not technique heavy it's just about well mostly about fussy cutting and then putting everything together so that it is that it's cute in particular the gnome because he is stinking cute so you're going to glue down your red cardstock which is four and a half by six and a half and then you're going to glue down your white and then you're going to glue down your pattern paper so we are going to do that and I I won't lie that's about as much as he's adhesive as I use I try to make sure the corners get done um, I don't worry too much about my cards falling apart I know that when I teach in class that's a big concern that everything is going to fall apart and people get a little adhesive crazy and I don't think that you have to um, if you're using a quality adhesive you shouldn't have a problem I love this easy runner by scrapbook adhesive um, it is my favorite and then after that sequin so the gnomes are adorable Mary my feed that I'm watching is behind so oh well so we have all of those papers glued down and the next step is to add our ribbon to our tag so I don't put a ton of bows um, not because I don't love them but because they create so much height and if you're mailing them that causes some trouble when you're trying to get that through the slot so this one is just a knot and then I take I don't have any here but I take liquid adhesive and I put a drip in the knot and that way when I tighten it that knot's not gonna come undone and I don't have to worry about that and then you're going to clip your ends and the tag gets glued down Um, my sound, the sound is low. My sound is up as far as, as high as I can go. Um, that could be, yeah, it is. So the sound on my end, and I'm talking right by the phone, so I'm sorry if that it's too low. Um, the next step is to take um, this strip of paper, and if it's longer, it needs to be trimmed to four inches wide because the width of this pattern paper here is four inches. And then I sanded the edges to um, bring out the white core. And you just wanna do it a little bit. Now, I would normally take it right to the edge of my table. One, because I don't care if my table gets wrecked. So don't do it on your nice, um, your mom's nice oak table like I did once. And <laughs> yeah, that was, that was bad news. But anyways. You want to bring it and you just want to go over the edge slightly and all that's going to do is reveal the white core and it makes it pop off of the dark background so i'm just going to use the edge of my table for speed here okay so you can see that it, the white core is there you don't want to go crazy because the paper is going to get all scratched up and well for myself personally I don't care for that um, if you're an inker bring out your inks and ink I'm not an inker but I know so many of you are so get your ink out and do it how you would do it so that's gonna get glued across there like so and you can see um, how it pops off because of that white edge so it does make a difference. Just something so simple um, can make such a big difference. And the other thing, you don't need a fancy sanding tool, um, a nail file, and I'm sure we all have a collection of those hanging around in a drawer, in a purse, in your car, under your bed, who knows. 
but we all have them. So the next step is to glue down the scallop circle. I wish I had someone here reading all my comments to me. Thank you so much, everyone. All right, now we're gonna go to our sticker sheet. Of course, if your sticker sheet is cut apart, um, these three circles here are, so we have a burgundy one, a gray one, and a little red one. So this one right here. So we're gonna take, and it's actually, this is dark and this is light. Honestly, ladies, it doesn't matter. So we're going to get a red one, a gray one, and a burgundy one. So the burgundy one just is going to tuck right here. And then these, no, sorry, the gray one goes here. And this red one gets 3D foam. So this one down here is popped up. And then the Santa Gnome, he is popped up as well. Now I would normally put um, all over him, but just because I don't want to spend my whole time here putting foam all over everything. Um, maybe a couple more. Honestly, when you're adding foam, you just need to make sure that these spots have foam so that they don't get pushed down and then they'll stick. So like you would put another one here, another one here, and you would put, I, well for me, I would put it on the ball of his um, hat, but that does require you, unless you have little small ones, which I don't, I just have this size, just cutting apart and trying to make it fit. And, holy cow. Okay, shaking here like a leaf. And as you see me like fli <laughs> flicking all my stuff, yeah. so that is my room. I have them everywhere. Mm -hmm. So that's him. There we go. Santa Baby is here. And then Ho 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 is right here. And on the Ho Ho Ho, I'm just gonna stick that to my stand here. I actually went over this with my nail file and just brought out the white core of the sticker. So again, making it pop. I lined the ho 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 up with the bottom of the gnome here so as to hide it. Okay, and then Santa Baby. Now, Santa Baby's gonna go here, um, and most of it sits on the gnome, but part of it actually hangs off. So in that bottom corner, I would add a foam, so that again, if it gets pushed down, it doesn't stick. And we're just going to hide the flat end of the ho-ho-ho. And just like that, ladies, you're done your card. Um, card number one, you're done. It's honestly can be it can be that simple um, and still get you know cute impact big impact so let's put that away that's card one card two so we need envelope number two bottom right corner and you need a black base and then all of your parts and there is only I think paper in this one because the rest is stickers and again, if I am moving too fast because you have to cut your papers down, don't forget that everything is um, saved. So you have your black base and then your three papers are going to go down. So we'll quickly put those on. How am I for time here? Mm, I look pretty good. So I, well, I have do 
Glenda, hello. I do have kits, um, as far as I know, left still. Um, four in my personal shop at Nadine Karen Design. If you go to Nadine Karen Design, um, that's my a website, and there's a shop tab, and you can go right into the shop, and it will be there. And then again, like I said, um, Treasure Memories here in Edmonton also had some um, I took in to put on the shelf. So, sorry. This frame, um, I don't like that. It's just too much. So I want it to look like a window. So in your kit, you have a three by four um, vellum. And that just sticks right to the back. I cut it so that you didn't have to um, fuss around with cutting it. Of course, I'm not going to be able to get it on here. Well, it looks like mine needs to be cut down a little bit. Oh well. Oh my gosh. I'm just going to trim it here. Okay. There's enough sticker on the top and the bottom to stick it, but if you are worried because the side stickers are covered, you can just cut some adhesive on those edges there. And then this goes down and you can see the difference um, through the window pane of the frame. Um, the coloring here. The next step is the ho ho ho, which are here. Um, and they don't need to be in any particular order. However, I did pop the one ho, the one ho, ho ho. That's not appropriate. Just in case your instructions are in the wrong order, they shouldn't be. But, you know, never know. They shouldn't be. But again, all the photos are on my website um, and they are listed in order. And again, don't forget your envelopes are numbered. So this ho, 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 oh my goodness. It gets a foam to pop it up. How many times can I say the word ho in one card class? Um, this guy right here is this. And so it is gonna sit on an angle. And so we're going to take foam and we're just gonna put it on the outside edge instead of all over. Here, oh my goodness. Oh, my car kit is sold out. Thank you, ladies. If I can order more stickers, um, that is something that I can do, is make more. So this guy tucks in here, and it's honestly paper piercer, anything, a long needle, anything you have, you can go in here, and it's just going to tuck in. And just like that. So the base sits flat and the tips are popped. The next step is holiday wishes here. Here we are and you can see, maybe you can't, but anyways. I sanded the edges of the holiday wishes again to pop the white, to bring it off the background. It's the same idea as, um, as inking, any distressing, sanding, inking. Um, thank you so much. Oh my gosh, I can't wait to read all your comments. So then this just goes here. And then we're going to get our Santa gnome. So this year, and I think it's because of COVID, so if there's anything good out of COVID for me, it's been that people want card kits. And I have been busy since July um, making card kits. There's a few on my site, but um, most of my product, most of my kits sell um, directly out of Treasure Memories. That's where I teach my classes when I am teaching in person. Um, I'm not right now. So that's where he goes. And then we're going to get this flower. 
and it just sits right behind him like so again lady ladies everyone I don't want to exclude any gentlemen that might be here today um, easy peasy lemon squeezy that's card number two so if you are cutting your papers down I know that you won't be able to move as quickly as I am so I apologize for that but will I be restocking um, Bridget if I can get more sticker sheets because I do have paper um, then I will be able to do that um, but if you are interested you can follow me um, on Instagram on all of the platforms social media Instagram Facebook um, my website it's all Nadine Karen design and I post all of my work there um, so anything I make um, will be posted and available for purchase ladies this is card number three um, again we've used the circle dies from Tutti Frutti Tutti Frutti Tutti designs ladies so this is envelope number three this guy has three tiny gems in it so if you're dumping like I just did you might lose your gems but I'm sure all of us have oh sorry ladies we have to do something I'm gonna back up my apologies we're gonna put everything back in envelope number three and we're gonna take a second here can you just see my head that was embarrassing okay card number two that's the demo this is the one we just made it's on a black cardstock so I include an insert and I apologize that I missed that um, number one the black cardstock is not very heavy it's only 65 pounds I can't find a heavier um, cardstock well so far I can't find one that I like this one is 65 it's not quite heavy enough um, it is okay to stand up when you add an insert a for writing but also to create weight and it does help hold your card up if the face of your card is heavy the insert is four and a half by six and a half there now it's done sorry about that back to card number three like I was saying there's gems in this guy so don't lose them and a white base And again we're just going to start we've got your background four and a half six and a half your next cardstock is four and a quarter six and a quarter and your pattern paper is four by six so those three get glued down ladies And make sure your card is opening the right way so that you don't assemble the whole thing backwards. How about your trick card? It was super fun um, when this all got started and my orders started coming in because I got to ship these cards all over Canada and that was just so exciting for me and then orders from the States and that was that was pretty exciting because I had never personally shipped anything down there so that was really exciting so thank you to everyone again um, next step are our die cuts I don't have measurements on these but if you don't have a die cut machine or um, anything to cut these with, an electronic machine or hand cranked, um, punches. Punches work just as good. And we're out. And then this guy. Okay. So. We have this snowflake sticker here, which is this guy here. And we are going to just snip it in half. 
I snipped it in half a little bit different than the actual demo, but that's okay. And then this one just tucks right underneath. Use this to pop it up and stick it down in there. Thank you, Nicole, for sharing that. The next step is to add the giant white snowflake. Now, hopefully it'll come off without me having to clean up the insides. I'm not so lucky, we'll just stick our finger under there and pull them out. And that's just gonna go like so. Some of it, it's not a huge, huge difference, but it does make a difference. If it wasn't there, it would be empty. So it's the rule of three, creating something, a triangle to draw your eye in, um, helps with the aesthetic. Here's your snowman and he is popped with 3D foam. I go through 3D foam quite a bit, quite a bit of 3D foam. I'm buying two to three packages at a time. Um, I actually want to show you something here if I can find it in my drawer. So he goes on next. Mm, yeah, good enough. Okay. Here's another 3D film I wanted to show you. So this is the circles, but it comes with a backing. Um, I have seen numerous people in classes just throw it away once all the circles are gone. But get your scissors out because this is just money thrown away. Cut it up and use it. And it's almost double, double what you're paying. You're getting double for what you paid for. Let's find this red snowflake. It's down here. And it is also popped. Now I would probably see if I can fit a big one in there without seeing it on the front. Yep. Don't want to see it. And that's just going to go there like that. And then we need to find the gray snowflake which is like right here. Eleven oh six. Hmm, I might have to start cruising how you use. Oh, I popped this one, but it's not popped on the demo. Do what you want. Pop it. <laughs> okay. Burr is here and stay warm is here. Burr tucks under the snowflake or snowman, sorry. And then stay warm, sits over top, and just covers this line. But because we're going to put the one end is popped, we need to add a foam to hold it up on the other end. So this end is already on the snowman who is popped, so we need to pop the rest of it so it doesn't sit on an angle. There we go. Gems are next. So these three snowflakes um, have a gem and I recommend using a paper piercer because you can help pick up your gems off of the backgrounds that they come on and then you can place it and you just slide your thing out your um, paper piercer out and the gem is there it's not stuck to your finger you're not losing it and then this one goes down here or I could go up here. Let's put it up here today. So there we are. Ladies, card number three. So put that in envelope number three. Let's move that. Let's move that. 11.08. I am on till 11.30. Thank you so much for saying my cards are cute. The name of the sticker sheet is, um, it's the Kringle Co. It's the Card Kit Stickers. Um, there are two, for this particular collection of papers, there are two sets um, that are available. So 
it's the card kit stickers and the last four numbers of the item number are 9582. Look at the images. Honestly, both would work. They're both super cute. Um, card number three. Here we are. I'm going to move a little bit faster. Again, this is a back black background. So it comes with an insert. It'll go in here. So we're going to do the same thing we did for the last three cards. We are going to glue all our pieces on the four and a half by six and a half. And then the uh, next one is the red and it is four and a quarter, six and a quarter. Oh my goodness. And I eyeball everything. Yesterday, Chantel from Treasured Memories said, use your eyeballs. And it was my favorite line of the day because that's exactly it. Just use your eyeballs. I don't worry too much. And if someone who's getting my card is worrying about the measurements or if it's off centered, I'm not sending them a card anymore. So same thing as we did on card number one. We're just gonna tie a knot. And we're going to take that liquid adhesive, put a drip in our knot, and then tighten the knot to make sure that it's not going anywhere. This next piece is this plaid in the back, our buffalo check, and it's going to go across here. The edges are sanded, so just quickly do that against the edge of my table here. If the paper is heavier, um, you can do it freehand. About there. Do, there they are. I had a bit of a panic there for a second. The next one is this circle. Um, oh, that's good. And the next step is this tree with the black dots. And it's going to go eh, about there. And then this guy. This circle was actually a sticker here. I took it off, I added it to cardstock, and I die cut it for you. Um, I won't lie, there's two kits out in the world that don't have this done. Um, so that is, if that's you, you can just call me and we can fix it. And by call me, leave me a message on social media. So this guy goes here. Hmm. We need to leave enough room for this guy to fit. So let's put it there. These straight edges will be hidden, so we don't have to worry about them. The tree. And that goes like that. And the last is this super hipster, now I'm Santa. And he is popped. And I am going to put less foam than I normally would just for time here. And he covers the other straight edge. I'll go back and add after because he's touching and I don't like that. I don't worry so much about the legs if they come down. Um, so don't worry about that. Unless you're willing to cut teeny tiny foams and then you're awesome. Do that. Don't forget this one had the insert. Let's glue the insert in. envelope number three. Oh, four, sorry, ladies. This is five. All of your pieces. In this one, there happens to be a small reinforcement. Um, reinforcements from staples that you would buy for your school supplies or office supplies. A white base. 
and we're going to go ahead and we are going to glue these down. So I'm going to go ahead and just assemble. How much minutes do I have? 15. So when I sign off, I will go back and I will add more adhesive. So I don't want anyone worrying that my card will fall apart because it won't. Okay, this little bag is next. And this bag is from Michael's. It is a treat bag. Um, I'm not sure what kind of treats you're handing out that it only fit in here, but that's what this is called. It's a treat bag. It is from Michael's. It's in the party section. And I, if you have ever taken one of my classes or bought one of my kits, I love these bags. And that goes there. You can put gift cards in them, tags. I always put tags for the most part as an embellishment. Uh, mine are never functional. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna clip off the top two corners to create the tag. So, little trick someone taught me. So you have your corner, you flip it so that it's the opposite side. You line it up and then you clip. and you have the exact same corners on both sides. Um, well, so it doesn't look like a house, because if we get in too far, you got a peak, and then it's a house, not a tag. You're gonna add your reinforcement. Well, that's not very straight. And then you're gonna punch the hole. And then the edges of this get sanded and the top is actually popped. If you want your tag to be functional, don't adhere it in. I'm going to sand later. And it just sits in. Oh, I can't sand. Oh dear. It doesn't look. Eleven sixteen, And that goes like that. Wishing you is a tab right here. And it actually sits inside again because my tag is not functional. Your two die cut circles go here, like this. And then your trees are next. The red one and the light gray one. This one just tucks in here, and this one goes up top. Joy, we'll do Joy. No, we're gonna do the candies. So the candies are actually from here. And because they are both tucked, I just cut them out. This I can save for later, or just toss it, and then that goes in here like that. And this goes in here like this. Uh, maybe a little further. Next is Joy. Now, in this envelope, I lost it. We'll find it. Take our pieces out of Joy. This envelope has a black gem in it, and I seem to have misplaced it. We're just going to put that right there. So the card's greeting is actually wishing you joy. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I lost it. Oh well. I'm sure I can find one in my stash later. So the kids have a black gem. Find your black gem. And it goes right here to dot the I. And that, ladies, is card number five. That's gonna drive me crazy that I don't know that gem is. So, into envelope number five, that goes. I do apologize because I do realize that I am working quite fast here. 
But just remember, it's all saved. Card number six. That's it, ladies. We're moving on. White background. Envelope number six. All your pieces. And you're going to cut down your parts. Here's all your measurements. And glue it together. Oh. There we go. Make sure it's going the right way. Oh, that is crooked. My eyeballs weren't working very good there that time. I do find it helps if you're standing up. Because then you can see down at it. Whenever I'm trying to line stuff up, I do stand up. I might work sitting down for the most part. Okay. Oh, to heck with that. We're going to pop that off. And we're going to work freely. We're going to set that aside. Just pop this off. It's easy enough. Unless you use sequang, then I apologize. Um, and we can just work with it on there. The reason I say that is because I've used the Tim Holtz Tiny Toucher to staple through my two, my three stars. Um, but the stapler will go through all this paper. This is simply just the largest circle and the next circle size cut together to make that ring. And then you're left with an extra piece that you can use another time. So this just goes here. So while I'm finishing up here, I have 10 minutes. I am having a little contest or a giveaway. I shouldn't call it a contest. It's a giveaway. Um, on my Instagram and my Facebook. Um, both again, like I said, are Nadine Karen design. These two are next and they just overlap like that. Both flat, neither are popped. So Nadine Karen design, Instagram and Facebook. I'm having a giveaway. I am giving away my demo so the six cards that I made to showcase this class, I'm giving them away to you, to someone, some one lucky winner. Next one is this tree, and the tree goes in here. I'm going to take a foam, I'm just going to pop the top of the tree. You just want to get as close to the star as you can. That goes here. Sits at an angle. It just any dimension draws your eye in and just makes your cards pop. Your layouts, or your cards, or whatever project you're working on. This is next. This sticker, part of me. This sticker is part of the ho. Is anyone counting? How many times have I said that now? And he is popped. And he just sits there like that. Happy holidays. Here we are. Just goes underneath. If it hangs over the edge, as you'll see here it does, it also sits over the edge here, so not to worry too much. Merry and Bright. So Merry and Bright is a straight, it's a rectangle, flat edge, flat end. But as you can see on the demo, I've V'd. So I just cut in, turn my scissors, and create a V in the end. Um, it's not perfect by any stretch, but I don't think that it needs to be. And then that one goes down. This one would be a good one to sand to bring the white core out. I did not do that. Now you're going to look for these three stars. So gray, buffalo check, and another gray one down here. You are left with all of the stuff to play with on something else. So, gray one up here, buffalo check down here, and
and this gray star covers the covers this flat end. I don't like to see flat ends on my cards. I want them hidden as best I can. Like how I hid this one under here and I hid this one here. So then I'm going to take my stapler. Mine gets jammed. Please don't jam today. And I'm just going to staple these stars on. Not because I need to, but because it's cute. And it just adds a little extra something to your card. And then it goes just like that. And there you have it, ladies. Card number six. Five minutes to spare. That perhaps is the fastest I've ever taught a class. So let's put that one away in envelope number six. Let's bring all the contestants back in so that you can see all of your cards lined up. These are the six. So first, I want to say thank you so much to all of you that are here watching. The fact that we get to do this virtually means that we can have so many people tune in. And I think that is incredible. 5,000 people in a group, it blows my mind. Um, the thousands of people that are viewing all of these videos, I think is so special. So thank you so much. Um, like I said, on my Instagram and my Facebook, Nadine Karen Design, having a contest. One of you can win my demos. I will ship them to you and then you will be able to give them away. The other thing that I wanted to share with you that I did for this class was create a card kit that is exclusive to the carnival. And that means that I have 19 kits that I made for carnival participants exclusive to you because they won't go out to the general public. It's just for you right now because no one else knows it exists except you. Um, my kit subscribers do not get first dibs. You do. So if you are interested, this is the exclusive card kit that I made for the carnival. Um, it will be in my shop for um, a week, unless it sells before then. Otherwise, at the end of the week, I move my product, um, most of my product. I will move to Treasure Memories in Edmonton here, and it will sell on the shelf. So for you, ladies, I created this exclusive card kit. These papers are the Starry Night um, collection from Kaiser Craft, last year's product. Um, but the papers are just gorgeous. I'm not sure if, yeah, you can see the shine. So, and then um, the gold foil on the Kaiser product is always just so beautiful. And then I added in these um, glitter chipboard reindeer. Um, and they're just literally the perfect match. So that you can find in my shop as well. Um, Nadine Karen Design on my website, the shop button. Or um, you can just search for me, Nadine Karen Design. Um, yeah, all platforms. Again, thank you so much, ladies. Thank you so much for coming to this class and joining me and hanging out and choosing to spend your time with me. It's just incredible, and I am so grateful. See you later, ladies.